Welcome to another edition of the Basketball Teacher Podcast. Our mission is to bring you discussions on a wide array of topics in the coaching world to grow players on and off the court. You can connect with us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, and also reach us directly through email at basketballteacherpodcast at gmail.com. Now, here's your host, Coach Mike Hernandez. Welcome back, and thank you so much for joining us wherever you're listening from and on whatever platform you are listening on. Today's topic is one that I feel becomes more pressing each and every year. It seems that more and more young athletes are being pressured to specialize in one sport. And from my experience, this seems especially true in basketball, where players are in clubs and play for maybe multiple club teams. They have their own skill trainers, and perhaps they have multiple teams within club and then within their school that they're playing for. And so especially with basketball, I've personally found that uh, specialization seems to be something happening more and more frequently. So today, what I wanted to focus on is multi-sport athletes and the benefits fits in the need to encourage players, especially at those younger levels, to play multiple sports and experience what playing different different sports is like. Uh, our guest is going to talk about her experience at the youth level and what she hopes to accomplish in her new position uh, at the middle school level as well. And so I'm very happy to be joined by Coach Morgan Hayes. Coach, how are you? I am good. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. And, and this is a topic, uh, as I've mentioned to a couple of guests, that, that I'm, I'm pretty passionate about. I, I, I coach basketball and have, and have always coached basketball for as long as I've taught. And in addition to that, I, I've coached softball, I've, I've coached volleyball, and I've coached a lot of players who have been involved in multiple sports. And I, and I think that it's so important that, that we take a little bit of time in this episode to really dedicate to that. So coach, let's start with your kind of journey, with your coaching journey. Uh, I know that in some ways it's just beginning, but where has the game kind of taken you? Uh, where are you at right now? And, and what's the journey been like in between? Um, yeah, so I, um, I played basketball all through, I mean, since I was very, very young. And I um, uh, when I got into high school, I started coaching um, YMCA ball at the at the youth level, and then um, a little bit through college. And um, so I am I, I am starting my first year, and I'm coaching middle school now, um, basketball and volleyball. And I never played volleyball, never <laughs> never coached volleyball, so it's a whole new world for me in that aspect. Um, but I um, I have that experience at the youth level, so it's it's a little different at the. Um, at the at the middle school junior high level, but um, I, I'm I'm learning and it's it's a it's a great experience so far. So, yeah, uh, I mean. I have so much respect and not just saying because I, I was one, but for all of those who coach and teach at the middle school level, especially, it's such a uh, challenging but very rewarding time to, to see the growth and the development that, that they, they go through in those years. I think it's awesome. And uh, I was right there with you, coach. I, I coach volleyball and I didn't know anything about volleyball either, but I, I faked it until I sort of made it. So right. <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully you'll find success with that too. And, and I think it's uh, just as great for coaches if they have the opportunity to coach multiple sports just in the same way that, that players can play them. So right. that's really cool too. So let, let's kind of start before we get into this topic with you, uh, your position now as a PE teacher. Um, I believe that you are the first guest that I've had on who, who is a PE teacher. So in your opinion, uh, what is is the importance uh, of physical education, and maybe now more than ever, you know, PE is is more important than ever. So, so what is the importance of PE and, and physical education classes, in your opinion? Right. Yeah. Um, for for me, um, obviously, I I chose PE, and and I have a real passion and love for that. Um, you know, PE for me just I feel like it really encourages kids to be physical, physically active, and and it it encourages them to you know have that love for physical activity for the rest of their life. Um, you know, also it provides an outlet for them to be creative and, and to show that self-expression throughout the day. Um, you know, it, it boosts academic learning, um, you know, it increases personal fitness, motor skill development, things like that. So, I, I mean, I think it is very important to, to get kids active throughout the day and, and and keep PE, you know, fun and enjoyable, but but make sure that they're they're getting active and they're getting their heart rates up and, and they're they're enjoying it. That that's the most important part. 
Well, a absolutely. And I think that if we uh, are, are doing things as teachers, no matter the subject that are getting players and students interested in something, I, I think that that's so important so that they don't lose that, that passion for it, whether it's, you know, reading or math or science or, or in your case, PE. And you touched on it being fun and enjoyable. And I, I know at the middle school level, especially, there are still you know, athletes or per perhaps people who might be interested in a sport who maybe never really had the opportunity to play that sport. And then they blossom and they discover their kind of love for a sport while they're in middle school. So I I'm curious for you personally, uh, do you have that hope to kind of get people interested in, in sports uh, through PE? Are you hoping that through your teaching that maybe you're going to be able to kind of ignite that fire for, for a student to maybe get them interested in a sport like basketball, perhaps? Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. Um, I, I, I try to, and I know this is my first year, but even back in my student teaching, you know, I try to do um, different things such as like uh, next week we're starting a hockey unit and some of the kids have never even heard of hockey. So it's <laughs> like I want to, to show, um, you know, all the kids different things in different sports and, and introduce them to all different kinds of things that, that they may not be able to experience, you know, and um, being from Missouri, obviously we don't have a lot of hockey here, but you know, maybe they can find that passion and, and find a love for hockey or, or whatever the sport may be, basketball, whatever, and, and really light that fire under them and, and, and have that, that love and that passion for, for whatever it may be. And, and even if it's not a sport, just, just having a love for, being physically active, you know, for the rest of your life, because, because that is super important as well. Yeah, I, I think the, hopefully that, that fun and enjoyable experience and, and them maybe learning about a sport just keeps them hopefully wanting to be just lifelong, physically active individuals who are active in, in doing something. And, and maybe it's a sport, like, like we talked about, maybe you ignite that fire in them in mm -hmm. hockey, for example, but maybe it's just, they enjoy just being physically fit and they just enjoy being active and, and just doing something. And I, I know for me personally, I don't know about, I don't know about you coach, but I know for me personally, if I was teaching PE and I was doing a basketball unit and there were, there were students who just weren't into it. I don't know. I don't know how I'd handle that. I don't know. I don't know if you have a plan for that yet when you have those students who are like, eh, basketball, who cares about that? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, d I don't have a plan for that yet because I just, I don't want to think that way, so I don't have a plan for it yet, but I'm sure I'll come up uh, with something. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, it just is a quick story. I may have mentioned this before to, to other people who are listening, but I remember that there was a girl who I saw in a PE class, and she was just she was playing basketball and shooting around and, and, and doing her thing. And I just happened to be walking by during my prep period. And I just, I looked at her and I was like, why are you not on my basketball team? And she just sort of shrugged and was like, oh, I don't know. And I was like, well, do you want to like try out maybe next year? She's like, yeah, sure, I guess. And she tried out and she, she did great. And she's still playing basketball in high school. And so <laughs> I think I think that's just something that, that to keep in mind to the, those listening, especially if you're at the, high, at the middle school level, is that you never know. Like some, some of these players, as, as you'll find out and probably see, just need a little bit of push and they just need somebody to kind of get them there. And then it's like, oh, maybe I am interested in this sport. And so, right. uh, yeah, really excited about that. Okay, so let's talk about your experiences at the youth level, you talked about how uh, you, you've done some work through through YMCA, as through high school and through college. So, in your experience, I believe you've seen athletes, uh, young athletes, who were involved in multiple clubs, activities, and sports. And so, in your experience, why is it so important for young children, especially, to be playing and exposed to multiple sports? Um. For me, I think the very, like the most important, you know, thing is to, they will keep that love for the game and not get burned out. You know, if they are, if they are focusing on one sport at a very young age, um, odds are, and I've seen it with a lot of athletes, they're going to, they're going to burn out and they're, they're just not going to have that love for the game that they would if they, you know, kids need that break. So to have them play, you know, football and then go into basketball and then um, go into baseball, you know, that, that, that creates um, the opportunity for them to not to not burn out and then have a love for each of those games. Um, I also really think that it is important to to play different sports because 
different sports use different muscles. And so if you're playing the same sport and you're doing the same thing over and over and over again, um, you're going to, you're going to have overuse of, of those same muscles and, and that can cause, um, that can cause injuries. And, and so doing different things will, will be, um, will be very beneficial for injury prevention. And so something that, that you mentioned that I want to touch on really quickly is you mentioned uh, about that burnout and, and you said that, that you have seen burnout in players before. Can you, can you touch on that a little bit more? Like what, what did you notice or how did you notice that, that these people were getting burnt out? Yeah, just, um, just, ki- I mean, I'll touch on a specific player, but he, I mean, he was trying to specialize in basketball and, um, at a very young age, I mean, I believe it was like, oh, I don't know, sixth grade, maybe very young. Oh, wow. And, um, you know, he just, he didn't enjoy it. He didn't enjoy coming to practice. He didn't enjoy the game. And, um, I mean, he was, he was playing basketball almost year round. And, um, you know, when, when, when you're doing that and you're not having any breaks from that, it's just, you, you, you as a player and, and this particular, particular athlete of mine, he, he just, just burned out. He just didn't, didn't have any um, enjoyment at all for, for that, for that game anymore. And so, you know, I think that kids, especially younger kids, they definitely need, need a break. <laughs> they need a break from, from different things and to, they need an opportunity to try new things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, a hundred percent agree, and I, I think that that's that's a scary thought to imagine that somebody as young as sixth grade uh, a- ends up getting getting burnt out like that. And and so when you had that experience with with that particular individual, did you find that you almost had to kind of reteach him how to like love the game, or did you find that like he was in such a position that like maybe basketball wasn't even something that he should be doing for a while? Um. Yeah. Um. I, I tried to make it as fun as possible and try not to make it um, more like a job. I, I felt like he would come and it was it was like a job, like he had to be there, <laughs> like it wasn't fun at all. So I tried to make, you know, practice and, and games just as fun as possible for this for this particular athlete because, I mean, it just it wasn't fun for him anymore. It was like routine. Okay, we're gonna come in, we're gonna practice. Okay, then we're gonna have a game, and it was just like, what can I do as a coach to to make this fun and to make him love the game again, because, because right now this isn't it. And so, um, I don't, I honestly don't even remember if he, he, if he ended up continuing to play on after sixth grade, I really don't remember, but, um, but all I remember is he just, he did not have that, that love anymore Mm. at that, at such a young level. And that was, it was very heartbreaking as a, as a coach to see that. Yeah, I I can imagine, especially if you're like, if you're a coach who's who's really excited uh, about your sport and you're really excited about coaching and, and you're really excited to get your players and then, you know, you get this particular player who just probably basketball is the last thing they should be doing. It, 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 mm-hmm. I can imagine that it's not only difficult for, for the player, but then for you as the coach who's super excited and, and all of a sudden you're, the player's just not into it just because they've, they've had too much and they, they need to take right. a step away and they need that break. Um, and so... When you were coaching at that that the youth level, uh, did you coach primarily players uh, who were engaged in multiple sports and in multiple activities? Were were they pretty active? What what was that kind of demographic like? Yeah, yeah, I had a lot of a lot of athletes that did a lot of different things. I had a lot of football players actually, um, and then. Um, after that, it was kind of a mix of soccer or baseball because it, it, they it kind of went either way. So I, I had a lot of I had a lot of athletes that did that did a lot of different sports and and that was I mean I thought it was great. I I never tried to um, you know push basketball at them. Hey, you need to be more into basketball than you are football or baseball or soccer or anything like that because I I, I am a very um, huge promoter of of a multi sport athlete and so. I was very fortunate to have to have a lot of athletes that that played multiple sports. Well, with that, it, it sounds like you kind of put yourself in a good position uh, where you kind of realize 
that the players, especially at that younger level, if they're trying out all these different things, they're trying out all these different sports that ultimately, if they do try to focus on one, that it, it might not be basketball. And like, that's okay too. And, and that you're getting the players exposed to a lot of different things and, and maybe they're trying out a bunch of different sports and they're active in a, in a bunch of different sports, but they might end up not sticking with basketball. They might find that that's a sport that isn't really for them, or maybe they find another sport in that season that they enjoy more. And it sounds like to me that that, that was something that you were like kind of okay with because you didn't want them specializing. You wanted them trying a bunch of different things. Am I, am I correct yeah. in thinking that? Y yes, 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 most definitely. Great. Um, really quickly, what level uh, in terms of ages were you coaching at um, when you were coaching at that YMCA level? Um, the oldest I had were, were sixth graders, and then um, the youngest I had third third grade, I think. Mm. So third through yeah. six. So I, I, I'm hoping I'm, I'm trying to be optimistic with this with this particular question. But when you were interacting with with parents or or people uh, in the community at all, did you find that parents were understanding of like hey like this is a sport that my you know my players doing and they're going to do these other sports or did you also find that you had parents who maybe were like this is going to be their sport like basketball is their thing but they're going to do these others but basketball is like going to be what's most important to them um for the most part i had i had really good parents that Great. were that were um you know this had this athlete plays football basketball and baseball and and you know trying to if there was practice practices that overlapped or anything like that you know that communication was there and 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 for the most part i was very fortunate to have to have parents that were that were very understanding and worked with me and worked with the with the other coaches of the other sports and so I, I i would say that i was very fortunate but i i i couldn't imagine not being as fortunate as i, as I was because that would be i i, I feel a very tough situation <laughs> Well, it's, it, it is, it is very different. Uh, it's a very case by case type situation for sure. And I'm really glad that you had supportive parents and supportive community members, but unfortunately, uh, and, and some of the coaches listening can probably think of this. Uh, there are parents who will bring in their, their players at a very young age. And it sounds like you had that one experience with that sixth grader who's like, all right, this is their sport. This is, this is what they're doing. Like, this is the most important thing in the world right now. And, right. you know, it's, it's, uh, I feel like it could rob that particular player of like childhood experiences or just the exposure that comes with, with playing different sports. And so I'm glad that that wasn't necessarily the case with you. Um, so then for you, when you had those experiences where, you know, players at a young age, you know, they had, they had other activities going on. They had other, they had other sports going on during, let's say a basketball game or a basketball practice. It sounds like to me, like that wasn't that big of a deal to you. Like it, it didn't bother you too much. Am I correct in thinking that you were able to not be bothered by that too much? Yeah. I mean, at that level, it, I mean, it's not like we were going to play for a state championship. So, <laughs> I mean, if they, if they missed a practice, it was, I mean, it wasn't a big deal. Um, you know, being, being understanding and, and working with, with everyone. I mean, the, the other coaches in the, were, were people I knew in the community and things like that. So, you know, just working with everyone and, and being understanding it, that that's all you can do at that age, because I mean, like I said, we're not playing for a state championship. If they miss a practice or if, if they have a prior commitment to a baseball tournament during a during a basketball game or something, I mean, it, it, it's not that big of a deal. For, for me, anyway. I mean, uh, I, I well, know there might be other people that think differently, <laughs> but for me, that's, that's my opinion. Yeah, I, I think that's the right mindset to have. And I, I think it just goes into uh, just something for, for all coaches to kind of consider is that it's really easy to – really get wrapped up in in your particular program or your, your particular sport and and place it you know above everything else and and you know I know I've probably done this before where I've taken it personally if a player had something else going on and I was like what do you mean you're not going to be doing basketball this particular day but I, I think it's good to keep a healthy perspective and understand that yeah there's there's other things that are going on and that uh, especially you know at, at those younger levels like it's okay you know you don't want to be you don't want to be the coach who 
doesn't let a player uh, go to something that they wanted to go to and almost force them to basketball, well, then now they're not going to like basketball. And now right. they're going to be upset about basketball because they're going to think, oh, this is the sport I'm doing because I wasn't allowed to go do this other thing I wanted to do. And, you know, those memories and those moments add up. And so uh, definitely good to kind of keep that perspective uh, about you know, players got a lot going on and, and sometimes they make choices and sometimes you're not the choice that they make and that, that's okay. Uh, and, and do you think then as you're going to be starting now in this, this middle school position, is that something that you're still hoping to continue? I, I know that things get a little bit more important at the middle school level uh, with, with sports and, and things like that, but is that something you're, you're still trying to encourage? Is, is your players in, engaged in multiple things? Yes, yes, absolutely. I, I, I feel like it is very important that they that they play multiple sports and, and you know, keeping keeping the time commitment. No, try to keep it even at, at, at the at the middle school level and then at the high school level, you know, um, when it's basketball season, maybe try to stay more focused on basketball. But but at the same time, you know, we, we they need they need to be engaged in everything. And, and I think um, you know, keeping that communication and working with the other coaches um, and making sure that the conditioning, their conditioning, you know, during volleyball or softball so that they're ready a little bit for, for whenever they come to basketball because we don't have a lot of time um, mm -hmm. in the preseason. So I think that's very important. Yeah, I, I, I think what you, you, you mentioned was a really good point about the, the communication with coaches and everyone's just sort of working together and on the same page. And I think that players notice that too. I think players notice when coaches are talking to each other from different sports and they're kind of working together and collaborating because, uh, yeah, that would be a difficult environment if you had coaches who were – treating their sport like it's the only one that exists and no other sport does and every coach feels that way and then that that puts players in a in a bad position as well right. um and so are you let's say i guess hypothetically if, if you had a, a player who you know said that they were only interested in, in you know playing basketball and that's all they do and that's all that they want to do is that going to be something that you're you're feel like you're going to be like okay with or are you going to be like hey like I know that this is all you want to do but maybe try doing this as well it's kind of a tough hypothetical but I'm just curious about what your right. thought process is especially because middle school it's kind of at that point where some players might start thinking about specializing so I'm curious mm -hmm. your thoughts um yeah gosh that's tough I would say to try I, I would try definitely to encourage them to do other things um and and try to maybe especially at this level i mean they can understand and maybe try to tell them you know talk to them about the burnout and and injuries mm -hmm. and things like that and, and maybe try to make them understand you know why it's important to continue to play two or more sports and 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 maybe that'll help them with their decision on not to just focus on one sport because i i think it's important to play multiple sports mm -hmm. And and when you were when you were playing yourself, did you play multiple sports or were you were you just with basketball? Actually, it's very funny. I did not. <laughs> I did so, not. So you, so you stuck with you just stuck with basketball, but you avoided just, you avoided being burned out by it. Um, so let me just let me pivot then to to that for you personally, as, as since you just played one sport, uh, what what did you do to kind of avoid burnout or avoid you know losing your love for the game if that was the sport that you were uh, focused on? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I had such a love, uh, such mm -hmm. a love for the game. Um, but it, looking back now, I wish I would have played more sports because, mm -hmm. I mean, knowing knowing what I know now, I wish I would have. Um, so it's kind of funny is that I'm sitting here talking about how multiple sports are so important. <laughs> I only played one, but um, you know, I um, I I think I I don't know. I think I had such a love for the game, and that's that's really just all I wanted to do. Um, I did a, I did like weightlifting a lot. So I, I focused a lot on that as well. Um, and so, but I just, I wasn't, I wasn't, we didn't have volleyball, um, where I went to high school and then I just wasn't really interested in, um, softball and I hated running. So I didn't want to play soccer. So I was like, well, <laughs> I'm just going to play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> well, but well, you did mention though about like weightlifting. At least there's other activities. I know weightlifting kind of goes with basketball in a way, but there's still mm -hmm. a little bit of differentiation. I feel there's something a little bit different with it that you get to do, or maybe just be around uh, different people. But I, I think that 
though what you what you mentioned though is like your own like personal love for it and it was like yours that you had uh versus mm -hmm. maybe like somebody else trying to like force that on you and like force right. the sport on you like you had that love for that sport already um mm -hmm. and you were going to keep working at it and you were going to keep doing it um when you were playing did you play year round did you just play during a particular season um what what was that playing experience like um, we played, really, we played year round. I mean, I started, I mean, I started doing preseason stuff whenever, whenever school started. So in August, and then we did a lot of summer camps and things like that. Um, I played on some travel teams. Um, and then in the off season, really, I mean, I still, you know, played basketball. So mm -hmm. I mean, I did, I did basketball basically year round. So you 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 had you kept that love and you kept that passion and, and, and you, you you stuck with it and and I think what's great though about what you mentioned is that despite the fact that you had that personal experience where you didn't burn out and you played with one sport you still recognize the importance for players to be involved in multiple sports and so you you're kind of as you're reflecting you you kind of are mentioning how like yeah this was you know my personal experience of just playing one sport but I see the benefit and I want my, my players to be playing uh, multiple sports. And right. so do you, do you anticipate then seeing uh, players that, that you have in, in volleyball also like going into basketball as well? Is that something that you're going to like encourage or want them to do? Yeah. So um, my, um, I, I'm the seventh grade assistant. So we actually practice kind of side by side with the eighth graders. And so I have a lot of my eighth graders that play basketball and I've, I've already been talking with them. We, I mean, we talk basketball every day. Um, you know, I've tried to, I've tried to gear some of the conditioning towards, um, that'll be towards basketball and volleyball um, so that they're a little prepared whenever we, whenever we go into the basketball season. So um, I, I think that's really awesome that I have some of my girls in, in volleyball. That way I can work, you know, on the conditioning and things like that. Um, even though we're not in basketball season yet, you know, they will be, at least a little bit prepared for for when the season comes. Mm. And 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 you touched on uh, the point of, you know, kind of using some skills that they're going to do in in volleyball uh, to kind of get them ready for basketball, and even some things in basketball could probably help them a little bit in in volleyball as well. And and I know that it's a bit of a concern for, for a, lot of, a lot of coaches, especially those who coach football. I know one of the biggest concerns that they have is they have players who play football and the football season goes really long and then they miss out on all of this <laughs> preseason, off season and all the things like leading up to basketball season. Mm -hmm. So uh, with that in mind, I'm just curious about your perspective about if you have a volleyball player who's gonna maybe be missing out on uh, you know conditioning for basketball, what are some skills uh, that you hope that the volleyball players are developing that are then going to be able to translate for them uh, if they do go to basketball season? You know, yeah, I mean, I think that the, um, the fact that they're in, in the game aspect, you know, playing volleyball and stuff, that they're, they're prepared mentally. Um, I also think that if I wasn't coaching volleyball and I was just coaching basketball, um, you know, maybe keeping in contact with the coach and saying, hey, can you make sure that they're doing a little bit of conditioning? Uh, I think that that communication works really well. And, and you know, if, if all the coaches, you know, can work together to make everyone better, you know, I, I think to make to make everyone's um, to make all the athletes better. I think I think that would be very beneficial. I know it sometimes it doesn't work that way, but mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's the idea. Yeah, yeah. Again, as as we kind of touched on before, like in an ideal world, uh, you know, me as a basketball coach, uh, like I see the value in in all the other sports that they do, and I treat them as equals, and and hopefully the other coaches do to me as well. And and I think that that's when you get the most benefit. Like I like I mentioned earlier, I think when you get situations where coaches feel that their sport is the most important one, and they're they're kind of taking time or forcing players to take time away from other things for their sport, I think that's when you. Uh, potentially could run in, run into some issues. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I have experience with this as well, and, 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 and you may, or, and if not, you're about to. Uh, if players are, are in multiple sports and they're going to go from, from volleyball to basketball and they're going to have you for volleyball and then in basketball, um, are you 
are you worried at all about players like being burned out from you? Is there, is there something that you think you might might do differently or change so that, you know, players are, are ready to be around you for volleyball season and then they're also ready for, for you in basketball season? Um, well, I hope that they're not burned out from me because that would be <laughs> – but um no I think um gosh I think it's really going to be beneficial for me because I'm seventh grade for volleyball and eighth grade for basketball right so I, I mean I won't have exactly the same girls but um you know I think I think I'm a, I'll be a little more intense during basketball than I am during volleyball so mm -hmm. um I think it's like having two different personalities out there so I think that they'll get a I'll get a taste of kind of a more laid back coach Hayes in volleyball and then a more um, upbeat wanting to win. Not that I don't want to win in volleyball. That kind of came out bad, but um, I don't know. I know, <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you have that one sport that you're just super competitive in and, and basketball is mine. And so, you know, they're going to have a, a little bit more um, loud and, and, competitive and wanting to win coach Hayes in basketball season than they are in volleyball so uh, no, I I a thousand percent agree with you you know I I had players who uh they had me for three sports they had me for volleyball basketball and then softball so maybe they got a little bit burned out burned out with me but but they notice the difference come basketball season you know I, mm -hmm. I I could be a little bit nicer in volleyball and softball but uh, so there was a much different coach that they got <laughs> when when basketball season came. So I, I completely I completely get that. But but that also makes me think that maybe the approach uh, to, to coaching one sport might might be a little different, and that might be a benefit for for players as well. I mean, you you're kind of a little bit around uh, in in the in the volleyball season as of now, and, and getting them ready for volleyball. Do you find in, in your experience of being around the volleyball setting that the players are getting like a unique like coaching experience in the way that a coach would go about coaching a volleyball player might have a might be different when they're being coached in basketball? Is that, is that something you've noticed? Um, yeah, yeah, very much so. I think um, volleyball is definitely, from what I have seen, a little bit more laid back. Um, I, I, I had a funny experience. We had our first game the other day, and um, I tried to get them, you know, fired up and things like that. And uh, I, so I, you know, I'm a very loud and, and mm -hmm. upbeat, positive individual. And so I was like, let's go girls, really loud and stuff. And and my team just kind of looked at me and they were like, can you please stop yelling? You're embarrassing us. And I was just like, oh, okay. Yeah, you know, sure, I'll stop yelling. But that just, that in basketball to me is, that's what we, that's what, that's what I've always done. I mean, we were loud. We were on the bench yelling whenever I played. And, and, and anytime I coached, I mean, I'm up yelling and being positive and trying to keep, keep the mood up and everything like that. Because I, I think, I think that's very important to cheer your girls on or cheer your, cheer your team on and, 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 and keep, that, keep that positive energy up. Well, it's, it, is, it is different, as you mentioned, kind of being in a, in a volleyball game versus uh, being in a basketball game because just the, I think the coaching style just has to be different with the way that volleyball kind of resets after, after every right. point sort of and the basketball, like it's just like, go, go, here's the clock, like here, here we are. And and I feel like that that's that's a benefit though uh, for for players when they're in different sports is that the way that they have to handle a situation in volleyball and versus the way they would handle it in softball is, is different than the way that they would handle it in, in basketball. So it seems like that there still are like these unique experiences that that maybe they experience uh, in in one sport that could still help them in, in another sport as well. Um, especially those sports that may be a little bit more like individual based. I, I'm imagining since basketball is such a team sport mm -hmm. that they do a different sport. Like let's say like uh, softball and you got a pitcher on the, on the pitcher's mound. Uh, that's a very different experience than, you mm -hmm. know, maybe playing on a basketball court, but, but that still seems like that still seems beneficial. It still seems like they're, they're learning something about how to compete no matter which sport that they're playing. Am I, am I correct in thinking that? Yeah. Yeah. I would completely agree with you 100%. Yeah. I, I think that it's, 
important to recognize the like validity of those other sports and that the the skills that they're going to gain from them and so then that makes me think now since you get to see some volleyball players as they come over to basketball are do you think that you'll be able to tell like the difference between like oh here's a player that oh they played another sport and I can tell that you played another sport versus maybe a player who you know, didn't do anything in the fall? Do you think that that's something that you're going to be able to pick up on? Yeah, I, def I definitely think so. Um, not just, I mean, they're definitely going to be in, in better, more than likely, they're definitely going to be in better basketball shape. But, um, you know, already having some some games and some some team stuff going under their belt, you know, working together and things like that, that, that camaraderie already being built between those girls that played volleyball together, going into basketball, um, you'll definitely be able to see that and, 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 and watch that develop even more throughout the basketball season. And I, I think that that is important as well. Well, and, and, I'm, and I'm glad that you touched on, on the kind of the camaraderie that, that some of the, the, the players who are doing like volleyball might, might have in, in basketball. And then maybe there might be a group in, in basketball that, that goes into uh, a, another sport as well. And so then it seems like, there is that benefit where you have the players who played together uh, in volleyball and now they're going to go and, and play basketball together. But at the same time, um, is, is, are you thinking about not wanting the, the volleyball players to necessarily like click up with each other when basketball season starts because they already know each other? Is there going to have to be some team building you think that you might have to do to make sure like everybody's friendly and getting along together? Yeah, definitely. I think I think if that time comes, I will definitely do some team building. I remember um, whenever I was in high school, we used to do um, like a, we used to break up into um, like we would have a senior, a junior, a sophomore, and a freshman, and we would have to do like a a, a team dance, and then we would have a competition, and that was that was our team building for the year. And and if our coach thought that we needed it again, we'd do it again. You know, halfway through the season. So I, I feel like if if there comes a time and I can read that that the girls need something like that. I think it'll be very, very beneficial to do to do something. Um, maybe just one day, whenever we're supposed to have practice, just not even practice and have um, have just a big team building exercise or something like that. Because because that teamwork and that ability to work together is is a huge factor in in winning games and things like that. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a hundred percent agree with the with the team building aspect, and I think for coaches listening, that's something to to think about, or at least consider in terms of the little clicks <laughs> that might form within your team. Because I've noticed it myself. I, I've noticed uh, players who basketball was like their secondary sport, like they had other sports that they played, and basketball was kind of their secondary sport. And what I noticed was that I, I would have a team where like there were a group of girls who maybe they, they played volleyball and they really liked uh, volleyball. And so they clicked up together when it was basketball season. And then I had a couple other girls who were really into like softball and, and they kind of clicked up together. And then like they had these little clicks on my basketball team of girls who played other sports. And then uh, it, it's not necessarily a bad thing uh, mm -hmm. because they weren't rude to eat, to the other girls. But then you, you also realize that you're kind of missing that camaraderie, that they weren't mixing enough and they weren't mixing together yeah. with other things. And so just something for coaches to kind of think about and consider, especially if you have players on your team who are doing basketball, but that's not really their sport. They might click up with other people who uh, do play the sport that, that, that they're into as well. Um, and so uh, another, another kind of hypothetical situation, and I can talk about this as well because I've had this come up. Um, can you talk really quickly about the other sports that are at your school uh, when, ba when um, basketball season is not going on? So in the, in the fall and in the spring? Um, yeah, so um, we have volleyball going on right now as well as softball. Um, and so my, my junior high and the middle school girls, they don't have to um, pick between volleyball and softball right now because they, they get to play both. Um, but in high school, they will have to choose between um, volleyball and softball because they are played at the same time. So that's mm. a difficult decision that's coming for them. And then um, basketball and wrestling, I don't, there's not really any issues there. And then football, obviously. And then um, track, cross country, things like that. So, um, I mean, nothing really is overlapping 
at this point that they have to choose a specific sport. I'm sorry, I'm kind of oh, hearing no, no, no. off, oh, no, <laughs> off no, your no, question, no. but um, um, whenever they get into high school, they'll have they'll have to make those decisions. And um, I think what's great is a lot of the girls have played the um, the club volleyball, and so. Oh, in the summertime, the girls who decide to choose um, softball whenever they go to high school, um, I think it'll be really great because they'll still get to play um, club volleyball um, in the summertime. So, so that's a great option that they have. Um, that's great. Yeah, that's great. I'm glad that, that it worked out that way, that they'll, they'll have that option available uh, to them. Uh, so the, the situation that I wanted to, to ask about is if you have a player who – like basketball is their love, basketball is what they do. And, and they come to you and they say like, hey, like uh, I'm doing basketball, but I want to do something else that, that's going to benefit me for, for basketball season. Like I want to I get involved in something that just, just to stay active and stay involved, I want to pick some other sport to do as well. Um, either based on what's offered at your school or just in general, what advice would you give to a player if they wanted to play another sport uh, just, just so that they can stay competitive and, and maybe also help them in basketball as well? Yeah, yeah, I would definitely, um, learning so much in, in volleyball the past, I don't know, couple months now, I would definitely, you know, throw volleyball out there to them and, and have them get involved in that because I think it's, I think it's a great sport. I think it's fun. Um, you know, track, track is a great way to stay in shape or cross country. Um, and so I think that that would be a good option for, for, for an athlete. Um, and then softball obviously is, is something that a lot of a lot of basketball players also play. So I think there are a lot of options and I think it, it really just comes down to what they're interested in or what they want to try. Um, you know, if they're if they're not really wanting to be um, you know, on another team or anything like that, kind of like I was in high school, you know, lifting weights and, and just going and exercising. I I think that that is super important. And so um I would be a plan that would work out for them. Um you know, year round so that they could, they could at least still stay in shape if they, if they didn't want to play another sport, they could at least, you know, go lift weights, go run, do things like that so they can stay in shape year round um, so that it's not preseason basketball and we're trying to get in basketball shape. Yeah, yeah, that that would that would be ideal. I think it would be <laughs> ideal for like, okay, like by the time we start with basketball season, preseason, like you're in shape and you're ready to go. And mm -hmm. if we could have every player like that, yeah, yeah man, that would be nice. <laughs> we'd we'd really be in a good spot to be <laughs> off and running. Uh, you mentioned how uh, I, I believe that a lot of uh, the basketball players they also play softball as well. Um, I'm curious, uh, I'd have to think a little bit about this, uh, and so I'm curious your thoughts about, for those players who are involved in, in, in softball in particular, is there something that, you know, softball players are, are doing in softball that you think is, is benefiting them uh, directly in basketball, or do you think it's more of an indirect benefit? I'm just curious about your, your thoughts on that. Um, I think... Um, kind of like I mentioned earlier, the girls that, that play together, they have, you know, that, that camaraderie and, and that ability to work together. Um, you know, I also think that I know our softball coach does um, a lot of conditioning and things like that. So, you know, they're, they're at least getting um, a little bit in shape. And I think just, um, you know, playing, playing softball, it's using different muscle groups and things like that, that, that we may or may not be using in basketball. And so, you know, that's going to, that's going to help them, you know, not, you know, prevent injuries and things like that. So, um, you know, I think, I think um, softball really does benefit basketball, you know, in, in more ways than, than one, in, in my opinion. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I have found as I'm reflecting on it, as I asked you that question, that those who play softball, uh, they tend to, at least my basketball girls who play softball, they tend to handle pressure pretty well. They, ha they tend to handle those individual situations pretty well. And I think it's because softball offers a lot of individual situations where it's just you at the plate or you at the mound. And uh, I, I remember actually a particular story, and I may have mentioned this before uh, on this podcast about how a girl who uh, was a pitcher in softball and she was 
pretty good at it. She was, she was playing at the JV and a little bit at the varsity level. And then she would play basketball and she was a great free throw shooter. And I think one of the reasons she was great at shooting free throws is because she didn't feel any pressure because she was used to just being up there by herself, whether it was on a pitcher's right. mound or uh, up shooting a free throw. And so, yeah, there, there is that added benefit of kind of learning that individuality, which I think kind of softball or, or baseball, if you're a boys coach kind of brings. And, and yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think that that's one of those uh, benefits that I just thought of it, as you brought up, but yeah, definitely the team teamwork and just the competitiveness and I think that that's something that you've mentioned a few times that seems to be important to you is that those players who are playing multiple sports they're also having multiple opportunities to compete and and try to win at multiple sports mm -hmm. is, is that something that that you're valuing and you, you've seen as being important yeah 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 I definitely think it's important you know um if you're not out there to to at least try and and compete and try to win you know honestly you're wasting the athletes wasting their own time and then and then you're wasting the coaches time too I, I definitely think you know get out there try your best in practice um I mean you practice how you play so so you need to practice hard and then um you know definitely be competitive and, and try to win and be positive and things like that I think it I think it's very important yeah, the just just being competitive. I think you can't replicate that with like preseason or, or or off season stuff. You can get them in basketball shape, but but I think there is something so valuable if you have a player playing a different sport and you know they're competing, you know, on the volleyball court like every day. And then you know there's a certain mindset I think that they come in to basketball season already having if they're playing another sport in the fall, like they're they're ready to compete. You know, especially if you know they however their season went you know whatever happened in their other season if they did really well then they'll probably want to keep doing well in basketball if they didn't do so well then they're probably looking to redeem themselves in basketball right. and so yeah that definitely seems to be uh, a benefit as well now you mentioned how you you, you didn't uh, have too many concerns necessarily with the specialization uh, when you were coaching at the youth level but I know as we get to, to middle school the pressure perhaps for, for specialization and only focusing on one sport becomes a, a little bit greater. Um, are you, as of right now, with your own philosophy as a coach, um, if you have a player who is, says like, hey, like, you know, I, I, I really just want to specialize and, and focus on basketball and I don't want to do these other sports anymore, or maybe they want to do another sport and they, they don't want to do basketball anymore. Do you feel like that at the middle school level is something uh, that you might be okay with them specializing, or is that something that you're going to still try and like steer them away from? Yeah, that is definitely something I would, I would try to steer them away from. Um, I, I, in my personal opinion, I don't think that they should try to specialize in a sport until, um, until the college level. Um, I think it's very important that they that they continue to develop in in all aspects because I mean at at the seventh or eighth grade level you know they still might be able to develop in a, in a specific sport and so um, I don't think that they should cut themselves short and and not you know give it their all in in every in every sport that they're playing because um, you know they might think that that basketball is their sport but you know. Um, they still have four years of high school and by their senior year, you know, volleyball could, could have become their sport and that could have led to, um, to a better, to a better scholarship opportunity. And so I, I don't, I don't think that they should, um, should try to specialize in a sport. And, and I would definitely try to, to explain that to them and, and give them good reasoning why, why they should not do that. And, um, and hopefully um, they could see that and, and, and still try to at least stay in, in two sports for sure. Yeah, I, I think I think two sports uh, would would definitely would definitely be be great. Like just just staying involved, staying active, and, and kind of like like you mentioned is is that it seems to me that that you are concerned, and I believe rightfully so, about you know players not just just getting burnt out, but also just kind of missing out on opportunities. And I think that that seems to be something that's important to you is that the way that a player is at, at middle school, um, their experience at middle school shouldn't be what necessarily defines like their path for high school and that you think that it's important to keep their options open because like you never know what else might happen or what might occur. Right, yeah. Um, I, I definitely think that, you know, they're, they're, they're still so young and they're still developing and, and you know, they still have four years of high school, like I said, and so um, they shouldn't sell themselves short. Um, and I, I could use a, a great example. Um, 
my my brother he um he just signed in a couple weeks ago to play um division one baseball at, at the university of nebraska and so in high school i mean he obviously knew that 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 he was going to go play somewhere for baseball but mm -hmm. all through high school i mean he um he played football up until his freshman year of high school and he decided to quit football but he still played basketball because i mean he had that love for the game and so he played basketball and baseball all through high school even though he knew he was going to go somewhere and play college baseball, he still played basketball because it, it got him in great shape to play baseball. Um, it, it, he loved the game. He loved playing with his teammates, you know, things like that. So I, I definitely don't think that there is any reason to, to just specialize in one sport because that's, you know, that's what you think you're, you might go to college for or, or anything like that. I definitely don't think um, that's beneficial to the athlete. Well, you, you touched on something that uh, I, I think is a absolutely great point in that with the situation with your brother and that sport about like baseball in his example was the sport that he knew was going to be what he was going to be doing uh, past high school and that was going to be his thing. And I'm, I'm sure, sure he loved it and he still loves it. But the way that he goes about for baseball is is probably much more much more serious and much more regimented and that him being able to do other sports i'm not saying it was necessarily a break and that he didn't take it seriously but i think the attitude and the mindset that he had probably playing those other sports was probably a lot different and he probably enjoyed them for different reasons than he enjoyed playing baseball it seems right right yeah yeah you know he uh, he played basketball just i mean it was fun um, you know, he, he enjoyed it. He had great teammates. Um, it, like you said, it, it was a break and it was something that he, he got to do. And, and I don't think he felt, you know, any, any, not that there wasn't any pressure because he was competitive and he wanted to win, but he knew that there wasn't any pressure on him to, to, to perform well. And, and that kind of sounds bad, but, um, because, you know, he, mm -hmm. he knew he was going to college for, for, for baseball. And so that basketball, that basketball season was just, like an opportunity for him to kind of let loose and, and have a good time and, and, and get that little bit of a break before, before baseball season um, when, it, when he knew that he had to be super serious and, and it, was, it was crunch time. Yeah, well, you, as you mentioned, that, that yes, he did take basketball seriously and that he was competitive, but then it, he also knew then that basketball, like basketball wasn't the sport where people were recruiting him or people were watching his games or, you know, coming to scout him or anything like that. Basketball is just like the, the game that he got to play and compete and have fun, but not necessarily feel like he had to like showcase something or like demonstrate something. He was just kind of playing for himself and for his teammates. And yeah, I, I think that that's, that's a fantastic point, especially like I said, for, for players who put all this, uh, all their eggs in one basket and they're, they're really, really serious about it. Well, you know, what is the thing that they can do to, you know, to take a break from that? And sometimes it is playing another sport where they're not feeling that pressure of, of necessarily having to perform at a certain level. Uh, I think that's another great point that you just, just mentioned as well. And so, you, yeah, you're going to push them so that they uh, do not specialize in one sport. And, and, uh, and it also seems like you're going to be okay with if a player – decides you know in in high school that like basketball just wasn't for them and they, they'd rather do something else it, it seems to me like that's your philosophy that you want them to do basketball and enjoy it but it's okay if as they get older that they like let go of it in favor of something else right yeah 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 um I mean obviously I want them to play basketball um but you know if if they're if they're playing you know say softball and and they're doing soccer or whatever the case may be and 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 you know by sophomore or junior year you know you realize that they're gonna they're gonna get a scholarship for soccer um and and they decide to give up basketball so that they can focus on soccer and and, and they're still playing softball I, I completely understand that yeah it'll be it'll be a little disappointing as a coach but at the same time you have to do you have to know what's best for your athletes and and at the end of the day your athletes are are are, are the important the important part and that's why you're there so um I think I think just being understanding as a coach and 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 realizing realizing those things is is definitely um, an important aspect. Agre agreed. <laughs> and and my last uh, follow up question of this before we get into our our concluding part is that it seems at the middle school level especially, and I'll have you touch on this for from what you've seen so far that it's really important to make sure that our our players are are, are falling in love with the game and not making it too competitive, and that if each coach of a different sport 
especially at the younger levels and the middle school level, if we can help our players kind of love a sport, they're more likely to, to stick with it and at least be trying it in high school. And, and I think that maybe one of the dangers you can have at the middle school level is you might almost beat the love out of that player and maybe they only have that one sport where they enjoyed in middle school. And so that's the only sport they're going to do in high school. Um, do you think that that's something that, that is, is going to be important to you to kind of balance that of – coaching them and having them be competitive and working hard versus also like having them fall in love with the game and stick with the game as well. Right. Yeah. Um, most definitely, most definitely. Um, I, um, I can speak from, you know, um, watching, you know, you, you always watch coaches and, and think, Oh, wow, that's um, something that I, that I want to do, but you can also watch coaches and, and know that <laughs> hey, that's something I don't want to do. Uh-oh, and so yeah. I, I've seen, I've seen some, some different coaches that, um, you know, will literally just completely break down the game, and 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 you don't even want to play anymore because because it's not even it's not even a fun aspect or a fun environment to be in anymore. And I think I think especially it's so important at the at the junior high middle school level to to keep the game fun and to keep them loving the the sport and um and and make practice fun. You know um. We're, we're always, during volleyball practice, I'm always, you know, trying to at least laugh and, and you know, during the first parts of practice, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll see how their day is, how their day was, you know, things like mm. that because, because, you know, that's important and, and, and they're, they're going to know that, hey, you know, we're not just here to practice and it's, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a good, fun, loving, happy environment and I, and I think that's very important. Yeah, I, it's... It goes back to uh, one, of, one of the first interviews uh, I did about uh, coaching uh, middle school and that you don't want to be a player's last coach, uh, you, especially at the younger level. You don't want to be the last coach that they have and you don't want to be the one who kind of beats the love of the game out of them. And, and so I, I think that that's kind of a good point to wrap that up on is that it is really important for our players if they can to be involved in multiple sports, but it's also important for, for coaches, especially at the younger level, to make sure that they're falling in love with their sport and that each coach does their job so that at least when that player goes into high school, let's say they played multiple sports, they can look back and say, oh, I also enjoyed playing all of these sports. So I'm at least willing to consider trying out for them because I had a great experience with all of them because like I said, if they only enjoy one, that might be the only one that they do. Um, and then that also just ties in to making sure that, you know, you, you know your other coaches and they know you and everybody's supporting each other and making it a positive experience and, and just, you know, having the kids fall in love with all, as many sports as they possibly can so that there's all these sports that they want to do, I think would be, uh, I think that'd be a great situation. Great. Uh, so, so to wrap up with our Uh, closing segment coach I want you to think to a coaching moment whether it's from uh, this year so far or whether it's from your uh, youth coaching experience what is a coaching moment that you had that you think others listening would be able to learn from um yeah so I think um gosh I could I could use a lot um (laughs) I think you know just speaking in more broader terms I think just always making sure that everything stays positive. Um, I think that there's so many times where you can, and, and for me personally, there's so many times where you want to, you know, just go in and, you know, throw a chair or throw a clipboard mm-hmm. and, and you need to, you need to keep things positive and, and realize that, you know, they're just kids and, and try to make it more of a learning experience instead of just a negative thing and try to make it more positive. And, and I think that all coaches could really, me especially, you know, learn from that and, and, and do, do that better, you know, make things positive and, and, and keep them, keep them thinking, Hey, you know, we can do this. This is what we can do better for next time. Um, you know, we did this, this, and this wrong, but how can we fix it? How can we make it better? Um, and I think that that's very important. Instead of just being a, a negative coach, I think trying to fix things in a more positive way um, would be would be something that I I especially need you know to work on because I I'm so I'm so quick to just be like, well, we did this and this wrong, and why did we do it wrong? <laughs> well, you know, they're just kids, so we need to um, try to do try to approach it in a more in a more positive manner. 
It's it's a really good uh, reminder, I think, what you just said, and, and I know it happens with me too, in, in that we're so passionate and, and knowledgeable about the game, especially compared to those that we coach, that sometimes we can't wrap our heads around some of the mistakes that they make because it seems so common and seems like so, yeah, you know, in some cases obvious about what to do. But like you mentioned, just, you know, they, they are kids and, and they're, they're <laughs> learning the game and, and they need to be taught the game. And the best experiences, I, I feel like, for, for that learning come from when they make mistakes and, and having that environment where, like, it's okay to make mistakes, it's still positive and learning from it so that they can do better the next time I, I think that that's really important because it is very easy to <laughs> kind of just just step and criticize and, and and say something that that uh in the heat of the moment but then you know you never know if something you say might, might be the thing that turns them off from the game entirely <laughs> and right. because of that bad experience so yeah that that's that's definitely a good thought to keep in mind um and our last thing coach uh, that i give every guest is what I call our uh, 60 second soapbox where they can get out their final thought, their closing message, their final idea uh, for the listeners to hear. So coach, I'm gonna give you the floor, go ahead. Oh yeah, um, I, I'll just wrap up just by saying that I, I, I definitely think it's very important to, um, to keep athletes you know, playing as many sports as possible and, and you know, um, allowing them to, to have that option you know, keep, keep the love for the game there. Um, you know, try not to burn them out. I think, I think making practice and, and games fun and positive and upbeat, you know, obviously you're, you're there to win and, and you're there to compete, but, um, at some point there needs to be a fine line where, where, you know, they know they can still have fun and, and still win. So I think that that is very important. And, um, that's just something that, that definitely, um, a lot of coaches, especially me need to be reminded of daily. Um, if not two or three times every day. So, um, you know, just keeping that love for the game and, um, and, and keeping that passion there and, and, and lighting that fire under them and, and letting them compete in, in a positive and, and upbeat atmosphere, I think is very important. Love it. And, and it's, it's such, a, such a great message, especially for coaches who have all of this passion and they have all this fire in them and they're, they're, ready, to, they're ready to go and they're ready to coach. Well, if we have all this passion, we have all this fire, Let's let's ignite it in others as well. If we have all of this within us, like let's 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 ignite that uh, in the players that we coach as well. And like you said, kind of keeping it positive, keep it encouraging, and and keep it teaching. But at the same time, kind of build that passion that we have for the game and build that in, in other players as well uh, would, would be awesome. Great. Uh, so coach, I want to thank you again for, for taking some time to join us here to talk about multi-sport athletes, your experience, uh, the stories that you had to share. Uh, it, it was really knowledgeable. And, and if anything else, just a great reminder for all coaches that we love basketball and basketball is our sport for, for all of us pretty much. But keeping our players engaged in other activities and other sports is so important to kind of keep them involved in as many things as possible. So Coach Hayes, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Good luck going forward and uh, best of luck with everything. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you all for listening. This was another edition of the Basketball Teacher Podcast. We will see you guys next time. Thank you for listening to another edition of the Basketball Teacher Podcast. Make sure to connect with us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, or reach us directly through email at basketballteacherpodcast at gmail.com. Take care, be safe, and we'll see you next time.